Welcome, and is there anybody in the audience today? Woo! Yes! <laughs> Welcome to another great episode of Honor with Pierre. Today is February the 13th. No, today is February the 20th. Look at that. I'm, I'm, I'm still having fun from last week's episode. Today, we welcome the mayor of the city of League City, the Honorable Pat Hallisey. We also have celebrity chef Mary Bass is right here in the house. Is going to be talking with us. And last but not least, we have Laura Varley. All of this and more on today's episode of On Air with Pierre. We're back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to be having a great show and a great time. Um, if you don't know, tell your friends and family to watch On Air with Pierre. We have a date every single Wednesday at 11 o'clock in the morning. You and I are going to sit down and talk to uh, top CEOs, the mayor, local celebrities, and people that are uh, movers and shakers in our Bay Area community. Now, um, before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to some of our sponsors that have already enlisted to be part of this show. First off, we want to uh, give a big shout out to Macy's Baybrook Mall, who gives us a nice little outfit every single single time we uh, come on the show here so for the next uh, gosh we got uh, 2019 more shows they're gonna be decking us out with a fresh new outfit so if you didn't know Bay, uh, Macy's Baybrook Mall has a service called my stylist and uh, it's actually a free service where you show up and you make an appointment with our friend Michael Haddock and they actually will walk you through a whole uh, assessment where they put together an outfit for you if you're getting ready for a big event and guess what the best part is it doesn't cost anything it's a complimentary service provided by Macy's and uh, so if you are looking to get a new outfit um, go and visit my friend Michael over at Macy's in Baybrook Mall they're gonna be helping you uh, get uh, decked out and looking good so we want to give a big shout out to our friends at Macy's at Baybrook Mall next we have South Shore Harbor Resort and Conference Center uh, <clears throat> we're excited to be working with them this year as uh, they're launching a uh, awesome summer campaign so be on the lookout for that and of course if you have not had an opportunity to go look at the newly renovated uh, South Shore Harbor Resort you are missing out we're gonna be uh, having uh, some folks from the hotel that are gonna be coming to talk to us and uh, I think next month we have them lined up so be on the lookout for that okay well, we're gonna take a short little commercial break and when we come back we are gonna start our conversation with uh, the mayor of the city of League City so stay tuned we'll be right back after this good morning, good morning. welcome to live to lead this truly is a one-of-a-kind day a day where transformation happens when I use the term leader shift what I'm talking about is having the ability to make positive changes in your life and in the life of the group that you lead. When you understand that it's not just about you in the moment, it changes everything, it shifts. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. I want more than that. And I can only do that if I am constantly looking for ways to shift my comfort zone. My shift actually is from goals to growth. My shift would be knowing that it's not about me. My shift will actually be in the way I look at growth. My shift would be leading outside of limits. It has been an amazing experience. Every meeting and group event deserves to be at South Shore Harbor Resort. From extravagant to intimate, trust us to make your next business event a success. Perfectly located just 30 miles south of Houston, South Shore Harbor Resort is the largest full-service waterside resort in Southeast Texas. Mixing business with pleasure has its benefits. 
Our executive chef has created a delicious menu full of the best local ingredients. With upscale, casual, and poolside dining options, there is something for every appetite. Business has never been easier with such amazing choice of meeting spaces that provide a relaxed waterfront setting. Our state-of-the-art amphitheater is perfect for delivering a winning presentation. Swim, float, or paddle up to the poolside bar and enjoy the sun in our amazing 185-foot tropical oasis pool. Or take your time and lounge around in one of the beautiful private cabanas. You're going to sleep well in our luxurious, spacious, and airy rooms, furnished with plush bedding and a maritime theme. Business does not have to be all business, while conferencing at South Shore Harbor Resort and Conference Center. Memories made here. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today for another great episode of On Air with Pierre. We are honored today and we are delighted because our first guest is the Honorable Mayor Pat Hallisey. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you, Pierre. How nice to be today? with you. Thank yes. you. Yes. See, look, the studio is excited to have you here. I have, I have friends here. Okay. I like it. <laughs> so um, I, I want to have a conversation with you where um, you know we'll, we'll get to kind of quickly walk through a little bit of your your career, okay. and then um, and then we'll leave some room for some of the hot topics that are happening right now in the city of League okay. City, sure. because the city of League City is a growing city, is a vibrant city, um, but it because of those uh, uh, that growth mm -hmm. sometimes comes some growing pains, right? right. And so, um, but I want to start off by uh, asking you to share a little bit about your journey into public service. How did that start? Well, uh, I'm going to say about 45 years ago, I okay. was out in Odessa, Texas, of all places, and I was a swimming coach, and I got hired to come back to this area. I'd started here earlier, and when I came, they were starting a parks department in League City, which appeared to me to be a bigger audience for me to rattle at and try to get some things done. So I took the job. Three months later, I was the director. I was there through 1980 and went to Galveston and was the uh, executive director of the Galveston County Beach and Park Board, uh, which managed all the county's public recreation areas, 60 miles of beaches, and tourism countywide. Does that uh, board still exist today? Uh, no. Okay. No, no. The city has their board. It still exists. Okay. Uh, they did away with the county board, which we'll never understand that, but they did. <laughs> sure. Um, but anyway, I had a great career there. And by about 1990, I was making plans to go run for office the first time. And the first office I ran for was county judge in Galveston County. And I, I missed out on that. Uh, and I came back to work and Six months later, I got a call from League City. It said, well, you know, the mayor that's here now is stepping down, and would you be interested in taking an appointment until the next term? And I thought, well, okay. So I did. And, uh, you know, I was there, you know, a couple years and got a lot of things done. I ran four times after that. And, you know, I'd been a Democrat early in my life, and let me tell you something, they beat you half to death for that. <laughs> uh, and it finally got to the point where, you know, truthfully, all I wanted to do was serve. I really didn't care about the ideological differences between the two. Um, I believe basically in a Jeffersonian quote that government's purpose is to do for its people what they reasonably can't do for themselves. Sure. But it's due for its people. Right. And finally, I just said, well, I, I don't need to be the one. Uh, went in there three years ago and, and uh, on my fifth run uh, for League City Mayor and got in. Uh, finished up Tim Paulison's term. He had left to go run for county commissioner's job and then ran against last year uh, for a full term and won that by 68 percent. I had a good turnout. And the city, you're right, the city's growing. It is a magnificent place to be if you're interested in building things. And that's that interests me. 45 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you, so you've so you had, a, I guess what you could say, a, a kind of a 45-year head start, right, into, <laughs> into public service. Because, you know, what's, what's happened is 
um, it, it almost seems like the challenges uh, continue to get uh, bigger and more challenging, right? They do. And, and not just challenging in the, in the realm of public service, but uh, mixed of that is some personal challenges, health challenges. Yes. Um, and then as a community, we, we were, you know, impacted by a national uh, hurricane, right? And a were. hurricane that impacted so many lives. And because of that, uh, all of all of the challenges sort of become bigger than they than they really are if you were to take them piece by piece. They do. Um, and so for, for, for you, I, I feel like um, I loved hearing a story about uh, running four times mm-hmm. and uh, and and you know not making it and then getting up and going one more step okay. right how important is it um, in your in your role to uh, to have that sense of tenacity well I think you know if you expect things in government to happen overnight first of all you're you're in the wrong business sure um, it takes time it takes planning and you know the moral to the story is you can't afford to give up. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do in life. Uh, running for mayor is just an example, but every one of us face those challenges that the first time we hit a brick wall, we we sit back and we go, well, maybe I shouldn't try that again. Right. But the truth is, if you were committed enough to try it the first time, make sure you're committed enough the second time, and why would you walk away from a task that was incomplete? Sure. Um, it, it's not good for you personally. And Absolutely. Yeah, you get hit with some challenges. And, you know, we got hit with some challenges a year and a half ago. Sure. But, you know, I couldn't wait to get back to work. You know, I was having them come to the hospital so I could sit around and talk about what was happening in the city. And, you know, I don't think I was home probably three weeks. I was back up at City Hall, and I haven't slowed down since. Sure. Uh, it's just a passion. You know, and life without passion – uh, it's like life without direction. Sure, There's and it, it becomes meaningless, right? That's right. It does, um, and it's clear <clears throat> from from what you've just talked about that your passion is 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 in public service. It is, and um, and from what you just said, that it's important to develop that sense of uh, tenacity and being willing to say, "I just got a no," but that just means that probably I'm closer to a yes. Well, right? that's right. And and so. Um, uh, now, in in the midst of all of that, um, talk to me a little bit about your 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 journey has not been alone because you have a strong, tenacious um, and, and boss. And, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you you hear her on the show. She's calling her. Uh, he's calling her uh, the boss. But um, your your dearly beloved wife, yes. uh, Janice Hallisey. Uh, walk us through a little bit about how important her role has been in, um, in, 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 especially in the midst of all the things that have been happening in the last recent, you know, two, three years. Well, let me, let me tell you, from day one, and there's a debate at my house whether we've been married 34 or 37 years, but she's, of course, <laughs> she, of course, is right. Uh, I asked her to marry me within a week. Uh, because my mother disowned me, but I knew it was the right thing to do. Okay. We just clicked, and she's been a great life partner in everything that we've done. When it came to the challenges of the last year and a half, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't be here today if it was not for her. I'm sure I would have lapsed back into going to uh, one of the fast food places to eat some greasy hamburgers mm. because I like them. Uh, but she makes sure I eat correctly, make sure I stay away from the things that are not in my best interest, and is, is still continues to be a wonderful partner. I love you, Janice. Oh wow! So you, you you're you're hearing the um, the authentic story sharing of uh, the 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 uh, you know what's the saying behind every uh, behind a every great s- man there is a even greater woman. That's great. Right? That's and great. So I, I, woman, woman, woman. right. I make sure I don't say women. <laughs> no. Woman. Woman. No, that's right. Uh, well, and and we certainly we have you know Janice here in the studio with us, and uh, you know our our a uh, big shout out to her because um, I can tell you, uh, Mayor, that I've had multiple conversations with Janice, and it is very clear and evident in my conversations with her that she is always uh, uh, thinking about uh, you know thinking about you, thinking mm-hmm. about 
your health mm-hmm. and uh, what what an what a valuable um, uh, relationship and, and partnership to have there. I'm uh, very very blessed because it certainly helps in the realm of, of, of public service. It helps in the realm of life. In the realm t- of life, there you, you go. Know, you, you you go through <laughs> life. Pop, uh, public service has certainly got its ser- uh, set of challenges, but sure. you know something. When you're with somebody who supports you for whatever you do, it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. If you have to fight somebody at home, it's a tough job. To all of our viewers that are just tuning in, uh, we're talking with the Honorable Mayor Pat Hallisey. Um, He is at the forefront of a city that is growing, uh, that is growing fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been talking about that growth sometimes comes with growing pains. It does. Uh, What are some of the, uh, according to to your understanding, what are some of the pains that you think the city is going through uh, that, that, you know, are, have required some attention and some addressing? Well, the biggest, keeping pace with infrastructure and growth is a very difficult item. Infrastructure is expensive as it can be. Um, And then you get hit with uh, Hurricane Harvey, which dropped 55 to 60 inches of rain, which was unparalleled in the history of Texas Gulf Coast. Absolutely. And so, you know, we are uh, working hard. Our city manager uh, uh, signed seven or eight engineering studies for the hardest hit neighborhoods the day after the storm receded. We are well on our way. We have the studies that have been done. We have had all the public hearings that we can have. We have formulated a bond issue uh, to deal with those. Uh, actually, two issues on the two major issues on the bond issue. One, 72 million uh, for drainage improvements and 75 million for uh, road improvements because traffic has just overwhelmed us. Um, we are looking to pay for that. Uh, I think it's always important to note, uh, and I think we have some clever people that work for us. We are looking at a sales tax referendum, which is the third component of this bond issue. Sales tax is designated specifically for drainage and roads. Okay. It's not going into an account to wait for later on or any other thing. It's a new twist on sales uh, tax in League City. We've been to the voters three times for an economic development sales tax, and we're defeated three times. This time... So this is the fourth. This is the fourth. The fourth attempt. And I like fourth attempts. You yeah, know? it sounds like there's a, there's, but, a good, uh, there's a good streak there. But we, we have to do something about drainage. Okay. And, you know, I would say this, too, that internal drainage within the city is a challenge. We have direct control over it. But there is a regional challenge uh, for all the cities, and we are active participants in the Clear Creek Watershed uh, Committee, active participants in the Dickinson Watershed, which both of those drain League City. In fact, both of them are chaired by city councilmen from League City today. Nice. And um, we have a mayor's group that meets monthly, that uh, along with Bayhap over here, who helps sponsor that all to talk about what we have to do legislatively to get the kind of money necessary to deal with the major issue of sure. how to get water to the bay. Um, you know, we we get 60 inches of rain, it comes down, it hits the creek, that's great. But if it doesn't get to the bay, it doesn't go anywhere. It backs up. Uh, that's what floods us. Mayor Halsey, one of the, uh, I, I think, <clears throat> we had uh, Chris Reed, the chief of police from mm-hmm. the city of Kima, on our show a few episodes ago. And uh, one of the things we talked about was the difference between uh, what sometimes the people in leadership uh, uh, view the problem to be and mm-hmm. then what the constituents believe the problem to be, right? Sure. And so there, there, uh, there becomes a sense of trying to bridge those two conversations together. Yes. Um, and, and, and as I understand it, you have that same level of uh, challenge in, in, in your scope of work because, um, you know, you just talked about infrastructure um, and water drainage and going from uh, being able to develop an infrastructure that is going to be sound for the city. Mm-hmm. And, um, and But then when we hop on social media sometimes, 
maybe that's not the conversation that's hot or that's that's no. boiling to the top. Maybe no. the conversation is um, uh, Calder Road, or maybe the conversation is a um, a a, a uh, bullet range that's you know causing some concerns in a neighborhood. There's lots of topics that get up to the top, yes. and those need addressing too. And so I, 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 I'm gonna I want to give you a little bit of a chance to to talk about how sure. you manage that. Sure. But we're gonna take a short commercial break. We are talking to Mayor Pat Hallisey from the city of League City. And uh, we appreciate his time here. We're going to take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we talk some more with the mayor of the city of League City, Mr. Pat Hallison. Every meeting and group event deserves to be at South Shore Harbor Resort. From extravagant to intimate, trust us to make your next business event a success. Perfectly located just 30 miles south of Houston, South Shore Harbor Resort is the largest full-service waterside resort in Southeast Texas. Mixing business with pleasure has its benefits. Our executive chef has created a delicious menu full of the best local ingredients. With upscale, casual, and poolside dining options, there is something for every appetite. Business has never been easier with such amazing choice of meeting spaces that provide a relaxed waterfront setting. Our state-of-the-art amphitheater is perfect for delivering a winning presentation. Swim, float, or paddle up to the poolside bar and enjoy the sun in our amazing 185-foot tropical oasis pool. Or take your time and lounge around in one of the beautiful private cabanas. You're going to sleep well in our luxurious, spacious, and airy rooms, furnished with plush bedding and a maritime theme. Business does not have to be all business while conferencing at South Shore Harbor Resort and Conference Center. Memories made here. This truly is a one-of-a-kind day, a day where transformation happens. When I use the term leader shift, what I'm talking about is having the ability to make positive changes in your life and in the life of the group that you lead. When you understand that it's not just about you in the moment, it changes everything, it shifts. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. I want more than that, and I can only do that if I am constantly looking for ways to shift my comfort zone. My shift actually is from goals to growth. My shift would be knowing that it's not about me. My shift will actually be in the way I look at growth. My shift would be leading outside of limits. It has been an amazing experience. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to another great episode of Honor with Pierre. Today we have the Honorable Mr. Pat Hallisey, the mayor of the city of League City, right here in our show. And uh, Mayor Hallisey, before the break, we were talking about the, um, the, the importance of being able to uh, understand the issues that uh, the city has to face, mm -hmm. and then also being able to hear what the constituents sometimes boil up to the top of the agenda sure. or what they perceive to be like, hey, these are the things that need to be addressed. Right. Um, one of those things is actually very timely uh, from from this morning, it, and it's the Calder Road um, uh, opening or, or uh, uh, grand opening that happened right. this morning. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, Calder Road has been a, a six to seven year project. Wow. It is a nightmare from way back. It actually is several it is open that's the important part this morning they cut the ribbon we gave out t-shirts that said uh, uh, I, survived I survived Calder, Calder Road. Road I saw that this morning uh, and it is two-way traffic and people can go north and south from Highway 96 all the way down to, to uh, so up until this morning it was blocked it was blocked okay and anyway we're happy to have it open it has uh, been a nightmare project but that's all right we finally got <laughs> her done um, People out there have been frustrated because it's hard to get in and out of their homes. Their mailboxes have been taken out. In fact, Janice said to me at 6 this morning, what are you going to do about their mailboxes? <laughs> and we asked the city manager, what are you going to do about that? And he said, well, we're, we're working our way through that. We Absolutely. know we have to do something. Right. Um, 
And so finally, people are going to be mobile out there. We have a lot of development that takes place at Pinnacle Park. You know, it's another way in and out without having to get on the uh, sidetrack of the freeway. Uh, we have new restaurants out there. You know, Olympia Grill's brand new. Sure. And we're expecting great things from them, as well as, uh, I can't remember the Mexican food place. Uh, anyway, what's the name? Abuelos, that's Abuelos. right. Abuelos. Excellent food. But anyway, um, and then me, me Bella, uh, little town Italian, yeah, yeah absolutely. great place. So whenever a whenever a new place comes into town, um, sometimes citizens are are. Uh, what happens when they don't like who's coming into town? Well, um, in my time, in the last three and a half years, there's only been one of those. And I tell you, every mother in town seemed to have my phone number. <laughs> and they all call in and they love sports bars. Sure. If they didn't like this, this place. This one that was coming in. Because they had and children. I, I think I which one you're talking about. There. Okay. You don't, don't like it. That's Absolutely. Your best, you know, that's the best part of a free society. Sure. You can make uh, decisions on best interests of your family and everybody else. Absolutely. And that's... Mayor Housley, I think we, you know, we understand that that's the the transparent uh, way to go, yes. and that in the long run, uh, the citizens and the constituency appreciate that, yes. right? That sense I of transparency so. because they say, you know what, I, I I'm able to um, voice my concern, um, mm -hmm. and and it's going to be heard, yes. and it's going to be weighed in into uh, the the discussion. And then it may not end up being exactly the way that that, that I want it, but at right. least I have a voice and I have an opportunity. You know, we hear from uh, places in the international landscape and countries that are um, plagued with with uh, with corruption, like you know the unfortunate situation that's happening in, in Venezuela, um, where people simply just don't have a voice at all, right? Mm -hmm. And so, no matter what you think, it it, it you're not even going to have an opportunity to voice it, or you're going to be castigated, you're going to be punished. Um, oh yeah, you oh, can look at the camera. I'm yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, what what happens is uh, people don't have an opportunity to voice, and mm -hmm. and and because they don't have an opportunity to voice, they feel uh, they feel very restrained. Maybe. And here in this case, uh, you know, you guys have open forums, you have city council meetings, mm -hmm. you have plenty of opportunities for the citizens to say, here's here's my concern. Um, one of those concerns to kind of go into a little bit of a hot topic is a, uh, a, 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 a gun range that yes. is, is causing some problems in the neighborhood. What, what happened there? Well, let me let me start with the fact that the gun range has been there 40 plus years. That's, okay. uh, it's not a new phenomenon. The city has grown up around it. And there are people who came to see me last year with pictures of bullet holes in their garage doors uh, going through their windows. And, of course, anybody that has children, that's a petrifying experience. Absolutely. So we took it serious. Uh, after the first trip in to see us, we contacted the owners of the gun range. They made a lot of modifications out there to try to control gunfire, uh, keep people from shooting up in the air. They've got covers over the, the shooting areas. And, in fact, they have just spent about $40,000 to improve the range. However... At this point, I'm not sure that improvements to the range will ever make residents feel comfortable because sure. um, it's next to a neighborhood. Now, we found out from our police department that we have no jurisdiction over a sports shooting range within a city. That's state law. So the first thing we did is we called Dr. Greg Bonin and we told him about the problem. He is presently looking in okay. to what can be modified in that law so that we do have some control. We're lucky that the owners of the gun range are good League City citizens and have been for a lot of years. And they are bending over backwards to try to accommodate the fears of people that live out there. There was a meeting held last night. Uh, I was at another meeting. Uh, it's the first one I missed, but our city manager and a couple council members went. And I understand that they're, you know, it got a little contentious, but that's understandable Absolutely. when people's children are at stake. Um, they came up, they heard what we were doing about it. Of course, it never moves fast enough in right. our business, but we are doing it. We haven't forgotten them. And one of our major emphasis for the last four years, three and a half, four years, has been uh, reconnecting the dots to the people we serve. And that means we have to talk to them. 
Absolutely. Any neighborhood that calls, I go and I talk. I think the first year until uh, my accident last year, I was given 150 talks a year. Wow. Other council members, city manager doing the same. We're all over social media, not only uh, not only uh, Facebook, but we have our own TV station. And, you know, there is a lot of information that gets poured out of there. Sure. There are no secrets down there any longer. That was always the complaint when I first ran, is that we didn't tell anybody what the city was doing. Now they're sick of us telling, and they wish they could get on to Leave it to Beaver or <laughs> whatever the next show is. They're getting plenty of information, right? right? And yeah. even with all of that information, there's still all of that room for people to sometimes either not get the full picture right. of, 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 of uh you know, an issue. And um, uh, Mayor Halsey, I want to thank you so much for, for spending some time with us today. Uh, before we close and go to a commercial break, uh, talk to us a little bit about your vision uh, for League City in uh, 19, 2020, and 2030. Where, where do you see the city uh, going in the next few years? I see us building out. We're at about 115,000 today. All projections are that we will cap out at a quarter of a million over the next 20 years. Wow. Um, so we're halfway there. That's going to continue. We would love, and that's part of what we've been working hard on, to diversify that tax rate a little bit because 82% of tax revenue today comes from rooftops, people that live in homes. And commercial development is like profit to a city. We don't have to provide the same level of service. Sure. Our Highway 96 development with a convention center, you know, Greg Bonin and Larry Taylor carried those bills for us last time at the legislature, gave us an opportunity to pay for a civic center, I mean a convention center, through the state's portion of the sales tax, bed tax, and mixed drink taxes, which we've never had before. So we've laid everything out. We have a half a billion dollar development sitting out there. And I'll tell you, a half a billion dollar development is not easy. Absolutely. It comes with its challenges. And we are being confronted by those challenges almost every day. But, you know, as we tell everybody at City Hall and the, the people who listen, you know, we have to work through these things. We can't quit. And my, my basic belief is you just put your head down and you keep working to get to where you want to go. Absolutely. This is going to be a good-sized city. Uh, the Grand Parkway looks like, at this point, governor and lieutenant governor have t uh, loosened their grip on, on uh, toll roads. It looks like it may be coming in the next five years. We're, we're excited about that because 65% of our uh, working population in League City goes to the northwest side of Harris County. So that plus, it enables us to have another corridor for uh, commercial development. So we're, we're excited about the future. It's hard not to be. We're building 800 to 1,000 homes uh, a year. Wow. That's at three and a half people. Uh, so we'll make the quarter of a million in the next 25 years. I don't think there's any doubt of that. And it's not that we want to be the biggest. Uh, I've always said being the biggest is not the the uh, objective being the best is the objective absolutely and, the, and, the, the quality. and getting better from where you were yesterday absolutely right? being able to improve um from one day to the next and 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 of course to everything you just talked about today having that open forum uh and that willingness to be able to have transparent and uh, right. an honest authentic dialogue with with the constituents uh mayor halsey we want to thank you once again thank you um, let's all give mayor halsey a big round of applause thank you uh, Mayor Halsey, we, we, we sincerely wish you the best. Thank you. Um, our doors are open uh, at the show here anytime you want to come and, and, okay. and talk with us. And uh, hopefully we can uh, later on in the year have you come back to give us a, an update on all the Happy great things to. that are happening. Happy and, to. Uh, we, 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 we love your, your, your energy and your willingness to um, uh, set the example for what uh, public service should look like. And uh, uh, please take care of uh, Janice for us as well. I will. <laughs> I try. Janice takes care of me. Yes, though, sir. You know? uh, we're going to take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we talk with uh, celebrity chef Mary Bass. All of this and more on air with Pierre. All right. Thank you. one-of-a-kind day, a day where transformation happens. When I use the term leadership, what I'm talking about is having the ability to make positive changes in your life and in the life of the group that you lead. 
you understand that it's not just about you in the moment. It changes everything. It shifts. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. I want more than that. And I can only do that if I am constantly looking for ways to shift my comfort zone. My shift actually is from goals to growth. My shift would be knowing that it's not about me. My shift will actually be in the way I look at growth. My shift would be leading outside of limits. It has been an amazing experience. Every meeting and group event deserves to be at South Shore Harbor Resort. From extravagant to intimate, trust us to make your next business event a success. Perfectly located just 30 miles south of Houston, South Shore Harbor Resort is the largest full-service waterside resort in Southeast Texas. Mixing business with pleasure has its benefits. Our executive chef has created a delicious menu full of the best local ingredients. With upscale, casual, and poolside dining options, there is something for every appetite. Business has never been easier with such amazing choice of meeting spaces that provide a relaxed waterfront setting. Our state-of-the-art amphitheater is perfect for delivering a winning presentation. Swim, float, or paddle up to the poolside bar and enjoy the sun in our amazing 185-foot tropical oasis pool. Or take your time and lounge around in one of the beautiful private cabanas. You're going to sleep well in our luxurious, spacious, and airy rooms, furnished with plush bedding and a maritime theme. Business does not have to be all business, while conferencing at South Shore Harbor Resort and Conference Center. Memories made here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed that commercial break and give a big shout out to all of our sponsors that help drive Honor with Pierre to success. We are uh, we just talked with Mayor Pat Hallisey and uh, now it is my pleasure to welcome celebrity chef Mary Bass. Hey. Oh my gosh, you have fans in the studio. I do, it's fun. I but like also, what I get to do. You also have fans um, all over town, and so when <laughs> we, you're now branded as a as the celebrity chef because you you did a, you did some TV shows, right? But then after that, you came back and um, got really involved in the community. You've been involved in the community right. a long time, and so I want to start off by talking a little bit about your story. How did you? Uh, where did you grow up? And and give me sort of the Cliff Notes version of what made you say you were going to be a chef. So I have been in Galveston County for 35 years, which uh, is my entire life. Okay. And um, I started, uh, my grandmother um, used to invite the first time visitors from church over to her house every Sunday. Okay. And so I was the only grandkid that washed dishes. So I got to leave church early, which I thought was super fun and go <laughs> uh, help her cook. And on a slow Sunday with just our immediate family, we'd have about 40, um, family members and close friends come over but on our really busy Sundays when all these guests would come we could have 80 to 100 people at our house and so she would cook a different meal every single Sunday and have these people over and for a decade we lived upstairs and she lived downstairs at this house and they would come over and we would feed them and it was just this great time of fellowship and so uh, she used to, her name was Mary as well, and she used to say, love must be shown, love must be demonstrated, and the way we do that is through food. And so that kind of was the start to my career and always knew that that's what I wanted to go into. So I went to Galveston College and got my associate's degree and then started straight into the business after that. Um, I started making cake balls. That's how I kind of g gained footing. I think that's how we met. That's how we right? met through Chick-fil-A <laughs> and through cake balls and then um, stopped making cake balls, which uh, some people are still really upset over. And I'm sorry. Uh, and Those things were good. They're, they're the best. They yes. really were the best cake balls. And so you know, as I've grown in the community and been afforded a lot of really amazing opportunities, you know, I've gained popularity as I've gone. So um, uh, real quick, back to the beginning of the story, a house that welcomes 40 to 80 people. Yeah. What kind of house do you have to have? It was an amazing, it was a huge house. Like I said, she had a whole downstairs part and we okay. had upstairs and then we'd spill out into the yard. And, and you had to wash the dishes for that? Yeah, yeah. It was, oh I gosh. really, I, I, I kind of used it as an excuse. I'm sure I did not wash all the dishes, but. So there's it was, something to be said about um, 
I was watching a show the other day about uh, it was parenting, right? But how kids there's kids that grew up doing certain uh, activities yep. that were that were that were chores, right? right? But they did not see them as chores. No. They saw like I'm so looking forward to being able to do X Y Z, right? And uh, and then you know when when you finally like like. Uh, wake up to the reality. They're like, "What? They were making you do all the dishes, and you're like, <laughs> and well, you're no, like, but, I, but it was fun. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, it was one of those things, and and it's something that's always made me more successful. Is is you if you volunteer for the hard stuff yeah. and the thing, the jobs that nobody wanted wants to do, you grow and you learn and you meet people that you wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet if you didn't volunteer for that. So especially when I was in culinary school and in high school, people, you know, are are teachers would ask for volunteers for things and I was always the first to volunteer and my fellow classmates were like oh you know you're just trying to get it teacher's pet da, da, da. but I would get to meet chefs and business leaders and you know here I am and it would take hours of my time and a lot of labor but you know I built those connections sure. and those connections have continued throughout my entire career I've been able to have you know relationships with those people because I put forth the effort to do that work early on. How did the, um, uh, you were on an episode of Cutthroat Kitchen. Correct. And uh, th 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 tell me how that happened. So it was kind of cool. It was twofold. Um, there was another chef in the community who had done an episode. And um, also through my social media, through Instagram, uh, the casting agents found me on my Instagram page and said, hey, you should apply. And then she kind of gave me some backing saying, gotcha. hey, you could, you know, this would be a viable person. And so it took about six months through the casting process. And then it took um, another eight months for the episode to air after we oh filmed. Oh, my gosh. And so, so you actually taped, we, uh, last week we had Christina Wells right. on the show who was on America's Got Talent. Yeah. And uh, we talked about how she went through basically five, six months of you couldn't say anything. You can't say anything. You're <laughs> under this, you know, non-disclosure agreement and you just wow. have to like sit on it and be, okay. you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, God, look what I got to do, you know. So and the, the episode that airs mm -hmm. and then you can talk about. You, you can know, say you can, pretty much whatever you want after that. It's, right. it's just keeping those, um, how they come out how the the, the results the outcome, right yeah they want the outcome to to stay now hidden, so. is it uh is it as 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 fun as it looks or is it a lot of like work and and it takes a long time how does the so for me the i chose to go into it as this is an amazing opportunity win lose or draw i got to have you know this Absolutely. opportunity that not many chefs are get afforded. to be on a platform yeah this right? wasn't you know the largest platform for a chef is online is or on media's food network and Absolutely. so um i just chose to have a good time so the entire experience like i got burnt in the middle of the second round and i'm still just smiling and having a great time nobody knew what had happened on the episode and you know so there were there were things that i chose to do myself to make it fun you know and had a great time so um that was the biggest thing for me is just utilizing that that opportunity and taking the best from it but i i had a great time like i didn't find it stressful because the sure. cutthroat kitchen is more about being able to think on your feet and less about being able to cook right you have to be a chef to get on the show but it's about how quickly can you think on your feet and and for our viewers that have never seen cutthroat kitchen um and correct me if i if i say any of this stuff wrong but there is there are different rounds right that you go through and you get a certain amount of money that right. you can use to purchase the sabotages, sabotages. Mm -hmm. that you can offload on somebody else. Right. So that or you they, don't either, have... they either make your life easier or make your opponent's life more difficult. And you start with four chefs and you end up with two at the end. There's three rounds. And so and I made it all the way to the last the round. The very first round, you were in an enchilada? I, was, oh. I had to dress as an enchilada. <laughs> yes. If you Google Chef Mary Bass Food Network, you will see this ridiculous enchilada outfit. And actually, it was kind of cool. Last week, I did went and did a private dinner at a beach house for a bachelorette party okay and the group of girls had googled me before i got there and they're like okay you have to tell us all about it like behind the scenes and by the time the dinner was done we sat and watched the episode together as a group and okay. i kind of got to go through it behind the scenes nice. it was so cool it was surreal just to sit there you know and, and have that it was amazing you know just being able to you know, share that with him. And it was only the second time I had seen the episode. So, wow. Um, um, okay. So we've got, 
if you're just now tuning in, we're talking with Chef Mary Bass. <laughs> she is a uh, Houston celebrity chef, but also she's a community advocate. And um, so I, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, giving the opportunity to talk about that you are a community advocate. I mean, in every sense of the word, mm -hmm. um, you are always looking to help bridge and connect uh, people and resources. Right. Uh, that has to be stressful sometimes. It is. It's very, it, it requires um, a lot of creative thinking and utilizing my resources to the best ability to help others. And so, you know, when we're in peace mode, which is, you know, most of the time we're in, you know, non-crisis mode. Sure. We just want to do random acts of kindness that build the community, okay. that bring community people together. But then when we go in crisis mode, we helped during Hurricane Harvey and the shooting in Santa Fe and most recently the government shutdown, utilizing um, all of our community and uh, local resources to help those people who are in need at that moment. And really it's just showing them that you know what, this might be what you consider one of the most difficult times in your life, but there's still good people out there who want to help and who want to alleviate some of your burden. And so, you know, we have just given people that opportunity to sure. do that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there is also a sense sometimes, um, which I don't know that I necessarily agree with, but there are folks that believe the the big organizations, yep. the big nonprofits right. that are worldwide organizations, right. Um, they there's there's a sense of distrust yeah that sometimes isn't valid but sometimes it is and and so because of that distrust uh, you've been able to, to carve out a very trust uh, mm -hmm. based relationship with Correct. people that are willing to either devote their time their energy their money right to say I can give it to um, uh, chef's tables charities yep. because I it's local it's in my backyard mm -hmm. I can see it I can touch it I can feel it yep um, and versus a global organization right. that th that sense of trust isn't there. Right. Um, and and how, how does that make you feel? That's amazing. Uh, you know, I've like I said, 35 years in this community, I really have built a great network of people who, you know, I'm there, I'm out on social media, I go to the events, people see, you know, what I'm doing and they know that what I'm doing who I am and what I'm doing is true. Sure. And so, like you said, the, the there's such a disconnect with the large, you know, scale nonprofits where you give your $10 sure. and you don't know what it goes to. Most of them have 40% overhead and mm. have salaries for their board. Right. We're not like that. The sure. most overhead that we carry is a storage unit and that's it. None right. of we're all volunteer based. My the president and the entire I'm the president. I'm a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> all of us are volunteer based. And so sure. president, non, vice president, all of us, we give our time freely to um, do these things that we believe so much in. And right. so uh, we had a gentleman during the shutdown in Arkansas that picked up our news article in the Associated Press and sent me $10. And this is my favorite story uh, about this. And um, he sent it with an apology. I'm so sorry that I cannot do more. And so I messaged him on Facebook. I was like, thank you so much for the $10. Like something just spoke to me about that particular donation. And so I messaged him and said, thank you so much for the $10. And he's like, I'm sorry, I can't do more. And I said, you, I, $10, do you know what I can do with $10? I was like, I'm gonna go buy tuna. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I bet you can get seven cans of tuna. And I was like, <laughs> sir, you doubt me. Like, I bet I can get at least nine cans of tuna. And so I went um, to a local grocery store and I got 13 cans of tuna. Wow. And so I took this selfie with okay. the tuna okay. and to show that, you know, you gave me $10, I used $9.90 to buy 13 cans of tuna. I had 10 cents left over, it went towards something else, you know, right. that your money actually goes towards what you want it to go towards. Sure. And so having that um, connection with people who are donating or, you know, and a lot of times the things we collect are goods over monetary donations and so it's uh, we had a mom who lost all her cookbooks in Harvey and so we collected cookbooks from a bunch of moms who they were just extra books and then we went back to the mom and said hey here's all these books that were donated you can pick whatever you want wow. and come to find out we had three other moms in the same boat right and so then we you know the books that she didn't want we were able to go to the next mom and say hey look at these books you know Absolutely. are there any and so it's being able to give people an opportunity to help on a small scale and make an impact and feel like they're able to do something, but the collective of so many people helping, sure. 
you know, makes a difference. It's making a ripple in the bridging community. connections, bridging resources. Yep. Um, the, the the work as a community advocate, it's 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 amazing that you do this work. And um, uh, I want to uh, thank you for for joining us yeah. today. Uh, I, before we go to our next commercial break, tell us a little bit about Chef Mary Bass. What does Chef Mary Bass do during the day? Um, <laughs> w w where does she work? Who, who, you know, what what kind of projects are coming on the pipeline with yeah. Chef Mary Bass? So right now, um, we are in the process of opening a restaurant in Galveston. It's called Katie's Seafood House. Okay. Uh, and that is forthcoming. Follow us on social media. We'll post as soon as we're available. No, we don't have an open date yet. Okay. We're working on it. It's coming. Katie I've, Seafood House. Katie Seafood House okay. will be down in Galveston and Harborside. But um, the nonprofit is really, you know, we've got several projects we're working on. We're going to give out Easter baskets this year to okay. kids. Uh, so coming March 1st, you can apply okay. if you are a low-income family. And, you know, it's we want to take that burden off you and make sure the kids have an awesome Easter. You can uh, apply for an Easter basket. And also we've started doing kindness rallies. We did our first one in um, one of the Dickinson Middle Schools. Okay. And we did a whole kindness rally and teaching kids how to be the good and, you know, using starting to get them to do positive things inside of the school. And so that particular school, they've been like, baking brownies for their custodian and writing nice notes to their teachers and holding the door open for their friends. And nice. so uh, if you're a school who wants to have a kindness rally, you can go to our website, chefstablecharities.org, and um, apply, and we will set up a rally in your school. Well, and what I'd like to do, um, uh, Mary, is um, at a separate time yeah. have um, either you or a representative from Chef's Table Charities come back just to Perfect. talk about all the projects that you guys yep. have going on. We'd love uh, that. To close out, uh, Mary, tell us three hot spots, three great places that um, you love going to eat that we, if we have to go, we need to go to. Need to. to okay. Yeah. Three spots that you can think local of. Or local or island? Local. Local. Okay. Um, well, well, I mean, island could be. We, we can pick a Galveston one. All right. Well, you've got to go to Penny's. Okay. It's down on the island. They have the best tamales and... Tamales. Tamales. And they have barbecue. Okay. It's kind of like a... It's a fusion down there. Okay. Um, you Gypsy Joint. These are all going to be island places. That's Sorry. fine. Gypsy, Gypsy joint. joint. Okay. Oh, they have two locations. They have Gypsy Joint and they have Gypsy Jive, which is on the Strand. And they're okay. both amazing. And then Hey Mikey's Ice Cream. There's okay. one in Galveston and there's one in Texas City. And all three of those, those are my peeps. They're right. a phenomenal food. You got to awesome. go check them out. Okay, so we got Pennies, we got Gypsy Joint or yep. Gypsy Drive. Yep. And then we have uh, hey, hey Mikey's, Mikey's Ice Cream. So you heard it right there. Three hot go. spots. If you have not checked them out, go and check them out. Once again, Chef Mary Bass, thank you so much You're for welcome. joining us today. We're going to go to a short commercial break. And when we come back, we're talking with Laura Varley, who is um, at the forefront of her organization, the Clear Creek Council uh, of PTAs. And they're going to be talking to us about their upcoming Founders Day celebration. We'll be right back after these short messages. Welcome to Live to Lead. This truly is a one-of-a-kind day, a day where transformation happens. When I use the term leader shift, what I'm talking about is having the ability to make positive changes in your life and in the life of the group that you lead. When you understand that it's not just about you in the moment, it changes everything, it shifts. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. I want more than that. And I can only do that if I am constantly looking for ways to shift my comfort zone. My shift actually is from goals to growth. My shift would be knowing that it's not about me. My shift will actually be in the way I look at growth. My shift would be leading outside of limits. It has been an amazing experience. Every meeting and group event deserves to be at South Shore Harbor Resort. From extravagant to intimate, trust us to make your next business event a success. Perfectly located just 30 miles south of Houston, South Shore Harbor Resort is the largest full-service waterside resort in Southeast Texas. Mixing business with pleasure has its benefits. Our executive chef has created a delicious menu full of the best local ingredients. With upscale, casual, and poolside dining options, there is something for every appetite. Business has never been easier with such amazing choice of meeting spaces that provide a relaxed waterfront setting. 
our state-of-the-art amphitheater is perfect for delivering a winning presentation. Swim, float, or paddle up to the poolside bar and enjoy the sun in our amazing 185-foot tropical oasis pool. Or take your time and lounge around in one of the beautiful private cabanas. You're going to sleep well in our luxurious, spacious, and airy rooms, furnished with plush bedding and a maritime theme. Business does not have to be all business while conferencing at South Shore Harbor Resort and Conference Center. Memories made here. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, for our final segment. We hope that you've enjoyed today. We've talked with the mayor of the city of Lake City, Mr. Pat Hallisey. Uh, and then we just talked with Chef Mary Bass. I do want to remind all of our folks that you can tune in to our page at Top Star Events and Entertainment so that you can watch the replays of today's show. And then you can go to PierreCastillo.com. We are going to be launching our prize vault next week. So be sure and stay tuned for that because we're going to have some cool prizes that we're going to be giving away right here exclusively on On Air with Pierre. My next guest is Miss Laura Varley. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And uh, you are the president of the Clear Creek Community Council of PTAs. Correct. Okay. So, um, and 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 you know, I'm I'm having to refresh myself a little bit mm -hmm. because I actually had the pleasure of serving on the Texas PTA board. Uh, but for our viewers that um, are, are tuning in or may not know, PTA has sort of three different layers of their of, of their membership, right? Correct. You've got the local Correct. units. Your local units, which are your schools, then your council, okay. which is above. I actually have all of CCISD and two of Dickinson schools. Okay. And then uh, state PTA uh Okay, so it's then there a, would be four above. if we and count the council in there. Right. right? The council so level is... A local PTA belongs to a council. Correct. And then there are councils that then report to As a, a council, Texas we PTA. belong to Texas PTA and national PTA. And national PTA. Correct. Okay. And so how long have you been involved with PTA? I have been a PTA member since my daughter was in kindergarten, which was about 21 years okay <laughs> and then i've been so you started when you were like three yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then um I, when my second child was in kindergarten he is now junior in high school okay i really i've been a member and and somewhat involved but really involved at that at that time when he was in kindergarten i had uh two other little ones behind me so i showed up with a stroller uh, a, a toddler and a kindergartner and said, I'm ready. Where, you know, where do you, where do you need me? Okay. Um, so that was when I really got involved. Um, a couple of years later, got involved at the council level as a delegate. And um, what's a delegate? A delegate is on our council, the way that you represent that you come to our meetings is every PTA has three delegates from their local unit that come to our meeting and those are, those are our voting body. And how many PTAs belong to this council? 44. 44. So okay. we have, um, so they represent their schools that are, at, along with their president and their principal, are all part of our voting body. Um, so I became a delegate and got to the meeting and they asked for volunteers. And of course, my hand went up and said, What, you know? So that's how I started. Um, on the council, I guess it's been a little over maybe 11 years with the council. What is, uh, and, and, and so now, what, what are some of the things that you uh, love about the work? You know, people often think, and, and, and I can share this by experience too, that, you know, I've heard folks say, uh, PTA is, you know, the moms, you know, that are baking cookies to go to the to the Valentine's Day party or whatever. And it's really an organization that goes way beyond that. It is. And that's the one thing that I want people to know is, is that's how it started out for me. I wanted to be involved in my child's education and, and their school and, and what went on there and have a say in uh, education. And it moved when I really got into PTA and learned that uh, Tech, PTA is a the largest child advocacy member based advocacy group in the nation, and that's sure. what we do. We advocate for students on behalf of all students. Um, so it became about a little bit more than that for me. It sure. was about um, advocating for all students and, and empowering those students to be the best that they can be. And, and the, how can I have a hand in that? And the organization has been 
uh, PTA in itself has been around for a long time. It's to the point that you guys have a Founders Day uh, celebration that uh, is celebrated na- na- nationwide. Nationwide. And so uh, the local units put together their own celebration. And I think you have one coming up. We have our council puts together a Founders Day dinner every year in February. Um, February 17th, uh, 1897 was actually when PTA descended upon uh, Washington, D.C. with 2,000 moms wow. who wanted back then to have a say, weren't even allowed to vote, but they wanted to have a say and, and develop this organization. And um, that's how it started. And so we celebrate those founders coming together uh, every year. So Founders Day is uh, February the 17th, 17th. Uh, and the year is 18, 1897. 1897. Uh-huh. Alice McClellan Bernie and um, uh, Phoebe Apperson Hurst were the two females that were instrumental in, in PTA. And so um, specifically your celebration that uh, you guys have put together, y'all are theming it out, it's it's like a... Like yeah, a, we always do a little theme. This okay. year it's rodeo, okay. we do a theme. And, and for our council, that's where we have our uh, fundraiser. We do a silent auction and we do uh, scholarships for two for each comprehensive high school. So that's our fundraiser to fund those scholarships that we give away every year. Okay. Um, if folks want to get involved, um, right now I know that membership is is one of the hot topics. It is hot topic every year, and and the more members we have, the louder our voice. Sure. So um, we're and right we about. Want to make sure we have a loud voice. for okay. you know roughly two hundred, uh, roughly two million students. Um, so the louder our louder our voices, uh, the more impact that we can have. Um, if people want to join, um, I think one thing that we want to make sure that we are clear with our with our viewers is is that you don't have to be a parent or a teacher. You can be a community member community that wants member. to um, uh, be a member of a of a PTA. Right, your voice is just as important as your time, and we have what's joinpta.org. Okay. Uh, that any person can go to joinpta.org um, and join your local PTA. Can you join a council or do you have to join a no, PTA? No, you enjoy individual PTAs. Individual PTAs. You, so you can, I can choose go... our council from the list. Okay. And then the drop down list will, every school that's on our council, you can choose, uh, you know, whether it's in your community or sure. your family attended or a, a, a neighbor attends, you know, whatever is important to you. Um, you can choose those schools and you can join. Any PTA or absolutely. So we, we have... want to challenge our viewers that are watching to um, visit joinpta.org. Membership is extremely economical, and it, it, it depends on the local unit what their local dues are. Roughly between eight and ten dollars. Okay. For each local unit, eight and ten dollars, and that's for a whole year. That's for a whole um, year. They'll get you know updates about the events that are going on and additional opportunities that they can contribute to uh, the, the the local PTA. And um, you guys have a goal. Right of we trying to increase, to increase membership. Increase, and we're almost there okay. for a five-year high. So please, we're we're roughly about two hundred away okay. from a five-year high. So we would love to reach that. Um, also, if you go to our website, cccptas.org, we have what's called a community membership. Okay. And you can join actually all of the PTAs within our council. You can join a feeder pattern, which okay. is a high school feeder pattern. All the elementaries and middle schools that feed into a high school, you can join that way as okay. well. So nice. you can support a feeder pattern, or you can support all of the PTAs within our council. Perfect. So we're going to be posting the links right there in the comment section. But of course, um, you can go to joinpta.org to get more information about joining a specific one. And then the other website was what? CC, four C's, uh-huh. P-T-A-S dot org. All right, so that's cccptas.org. Be sure and get connected with PTA, a great organization that is on a mission to increase membership and, of course, be able to uh, do what's right for kids all over the state of Texas, but most importantly, in our backyard. So, uh, Laura, we want to thank you for spending some time talking with us today. And uh, all of our folks that have joined in to view today's show, be sure and tune in to next week because we have another great show coming out. (laughs) We're going to be talking about our prize vault where you can win some great prizes from Honor with Pierre. This has been Honor with Pierre wishing you the best. Have a great week. (laughs) 